There we go. I can't believe it, I okay. Uh, welcome, my friends. I uh, appreciate you joining with us today and through the Bible, Brother David, and also Sister Lisa, my dear wife. She makes these possible. Or not for her abilities to uh, put them up and edit them uh, and to do all these little bitty batteries and little bitty buttons on these type devices, I could not do it. So much thanks to my dear wife uh, for taking all the time every week to uh, get these edited and get them online. As I've said before, were not for her, I don't think I could possibly do it. But I appreciate her doing it. <clears throat> uh, and uh, and I uh, appreciate you being with us. I've said before, I try to pray for all the subscribers and viewers every week. And if you have a special request, you can send it to me via the comment box or via my email, either one. And I, I do my best to pray for you, okay? All right, we're looking now in chapter 9 of the book of Genesis. And God blessed Noah and his sons. And I notice this right here, and God blessed Noah and his sons. I mean, that's a beautiful statement we read right here in the Bible, that God blessed Noah and his sons. In spite of all that just happened, all that the world had been through, in spite of all God's judgment uh, upon mankind, here we find the words, and God blessed Noah and his sons. I mean, what a, what a wonderful uh, thing that is to see that God blessed Noah and his sons. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're trusting in Him, uh, you, can, you have experienced the very same thing. God's blessings are upon you. And God has blessed you. If you know Jesus Christ, you're greatly blessed. And your life will be blessed by God in Him. And so uh, uh, be very thankful for that. Very, very thankful. I know we hit some rough bumps down the road of life. We think it's so bad. Have you ever thought about what your life might be like? If you did not know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I thought about that many a time. I'd probably be in jail or in hell. I don't know, probably both. But uh, but by the grace of God, the Lord came into my life one day. It, uh, this month, this month in 1976, I was saved, became a new creature in Jesus Christ. Now, I know people laugh at that and make fun of that. You go right ahead. I'll just take the new life and the forgiveness of my sins in Jesus Christ and you can take your mockery and uh, you go your way and I'll go mine. Uh, but I'm very happy and it happened. It happened. I am here to tell you that it happened. I can witness to the fact that Jesus Christ entered in my heart, saved my soul, made a new creature of me and, uh, in August of 1976. So that's been 45 years ago and it's still real to this very day. It is still real even to today. And so uh, notice this. And God blessed Noah and his sons. He said to them, uh, be fruitful. Here was their new job that they were to do. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Well, they had a job before them, and they went to work at it. And he goes on to tell them, here's some of the conditions of this new world. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that move upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, and your hand are they delivered. Well, man was to be uh, the supreme being in this new world, and he is. All the other creatures, they have a fear of man within them. And, uh, and man is actually the master of them all. And I know somebody won't debate some of that, but basically what the Bible says is very, very true. The fear of you and the dread of you, and that may be why some of the more vicious animals will attack a man, uh, is because the fear of you and the dread of you is within them. And every, verse 3, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Now notice this as well. Right here, after the flood, uh, God is telling man, that uh, he could eat meat. We didn't really find him telling them that before that, but right here we find it mentioned and said, every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. Could it be that uh, no longer could man get all the protein that he needed out of uh, vegetables? That may be the case. Uh, that he needed the meat for the protein and for his diet. And here God's given it to him. Uh, in, the, in the original creation and up to the flood, 
perhaps that uh, man got most of what he needed from the vegetables. But now God's telling him, you can eat that meat. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. He gives them some very specific instructions right here. And you notice, uh, you get on over into the law that God gave unto Moses, you'll find again, he was not to eat the blood, which is the life of the flesh. It's very important. And throughout the uh, Bible, you find that blood is a very important matter. And the life of the flesh is in the blood, the Bible tells us. And right here, we find it mentioned right here, uh, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof. Right here, we're told, uh, the life of the flesh, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And uh, we should not be blood eaters or blood drinkers. I've seen and heard of uh, pagans and barbarians uh, drinking a cup of blood from an animal they've killed, stuff like that. Uh, that is entirely against the Word of God to do that. Uh, if they bring you a steak and blood running down the plate, you better send it back to them uh, to be scriptural and to uh, dodge that. And uh, we're told right here, you're not to eat that. And surely your blood, and right here the subject changes, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it. Now, uh, right here, uh, this is something here I've never heard brought out in Scripture. At the hand of every beast will I require it. Uh, uh, you, you take if a, a, a lion or a bear or a dog kills a man, uh, attacks him and kills him, God is saying right here, I'm going to require uh, his blood that that beast has done that thing. Uh, whether a man kills that beast or another beast kills it, God's going to require that that beast die. Uh, whether it be a dog, and don't you go feeling sympathetic for a dog that's attacked somebody. That dog needs to be put down. That dog needs to be destroyed. <clears throat> shot and killed. Uh, don't be sympathetic toward that creature. Uh, and so uh, uh, a friend of mine, her dog, I think, barked or snapped or, or bit one of her sons or grandson. Uh, she walked the dog down the pasture, shot it dead. More power to her. She was scripturally correct in so doing. And uh, because the Bible tells us right here, God said, every beast will I require it. Now notice, now he steps on in uh, to the matter of a murderer. At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Now, as we've said before, in the days of Cain and Abel, God had not at that point imposed uh, this penalty for murder. But right here, he does impose that. And of course, now we're entering into the dispensation of human government. And under this dispensation, men were to govern men. And the highest jurisdiction of, uh, of man under the government is taken of a human life. And right here, it's very clearly spelled out. At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Verse 6, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Now right here some very strong statements we find. And we also find in our country today that man has grown away from God. Some states have abolished the death penalty. Uh, many states still practice it. And practice it they should. And they're the ones, the states and the government are the ones that should be the ones to carry this out. And I don't think it should be left just to heated crowds or vigilantes necessarily. I think perhaps the time in history they've had their place. But for the most part, it should be the human government to do that. I tell you, those who are put to death in our state today, they've had all kinds of appeals granted to them, time given to them, if they be innocent to prove that they were innocent. If there's been a mistrial, to also deal with that. And so uh, there are just uh, various appeals that are naturally given to a condemned man. When a man is sentenced to death by the courts and a judge in the state of South Carolina, that's not the final point of that. He goes through an automatic appeal is given to that man by the state uh, before he can be put to death. Sometimes these appeals drag on for 20 years or longer uh, before some of these people are ever put to death. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way at all. 
I don't think we ought to be too hasty, uh, but nonetheless, I think that we should obey uh, what the Lord has set forth in the book of Genesis chapter 9, also in verse 6, to require that man's blood uh, uh, from him. Uh, certainly, you know, it's not right for a man to break into your house and to uh, kill your wife and to kill your children and to walk free upon the earth. Why should he be granted life at all when he's done such a thing as that? Uh, uh, this has been probably 30 years ago. Some man stopped beside the interstate in our city. Uh, there was a bank right on the frontage road at the interstate, and he went in, robbed the bank, shot three people dead, fled from the scene, was never caught that we know of. And uh, surely it's not right for that man to have his life and to enjoy that money that he stole at the death of those three people. Certainly you, you would say that to say the least. And now, uh, forget this uh, sugar-coated, well, we want to reform him because there's good in him. Uh, no, let him face the death that God has described in the Bible for him. And let him die. Uh, uh, I think we ought to bring back public hangings. Now, you may quote, uh, squawk at that, but I think public hangings would be a good thing to bring back for those who are guilty. Uh, my great-grandfather saw the last man that was hung in Surrey County, John Jack Mays. My great-grandfather Hayes was there and I uh, saw him hung. Uh, there was a tree in the courthouse lawn and uh, they built a gallows under that tree, I, I, I'm told, and he swung from that. Uh, he, I think he said he thought the whole county it turned out to see that man hung. And I uh, said the uh, women uh, fainted, kids fell off of the uh, offenses they were sitting upon when they dropped that man his neck snapped and broke well he had killed so that was a horrible thing he had killed a woman and her baby just a few miles from there cold-blooded murder robbed her killed her burned her house down on top of her uh, it was a story that I, I was told uh, if you got more facts about it well and good I'd be glad to hear it but nonetheless uh, that was the basics of it and uh, so should it be and uh, occasionally the state of South Carolina put a man to death too. And that is correct. That is to do and fulfilling of Genesis chapter number 9. And so we ought to all be think, thinking about what we do in life, especially when it comes to that taking another man's life. Self-defense is another thing. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't slow down a minute if I felt a need to act in self-defense of myself or my home uh, to take another man's life. If I felt the need to be, I have never actually felt compelled to do so or even really close to do so in my life. And most people that I've met know I have not had that experience either. But here we're told about human government and the regulations that God gives. Now notice here he goes on to say, verse 7, And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth fruit abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. Uh, they're told here three times uh, about multiplying and replenishing the earth and to multiply within the earth and to bring forth. You see, this earth was created to have men upon it. And uh, it is created for the life of men to live upon it. And God has so designed the earth that way. And some of the conservation efforts I greatly agree with. Uh, some of what <coughs> the EPA does I greatly agree with. Some of our zoning I'm all for some of it. I know there's abuses, either way you turn in that matter, uh, of that, but uh, that which is good for our earth is good for us. And, uh, you know, if you build enough concrete buildings, I don't know where you're going to grow food for bread at. So just think about that. You plow up all the peach orchards, uh, where are you going to grow peaches at? And so a uh, lot to think about and the balance thereof. But my friends, uh, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, things can make sense unto you. Uh, he'll give you wisdom and understand all these matters. And, uh, and since as you travel through here, and I wouldn't get on the bandwagon of these people either way. Is the people building the concrete jungles or these people worshiping the trees? I wouldn't get on either bandwagon, either extreme of these people. Uh, but uh, the earth was made for man to dwell upon it. And at times that requires building, at times that plans cult, uh, it requires cultivation. And so may the Lord help us to know the difference between the two.